Okay. So we're recording. Thank you. So our agenda for today is we're going to do a brief greetings. We're kind of doing that now. We're going to hear from three people um, around the state of how they're infusing equity in their practices. And they want to make a few announcements at the end. And um, as I said, we are recording. And so if you know somebody who could benefit from this, we'll have it posted on the Excellence in Adult Education website um, and just to look at the recording. So um, our working agreements for today, we actually um, borrowed this from the Universal Design for Learning, the UDL IRN, um, the research network. If they did the international summit, this is from last year. We loved this. So we started using it is, you know, we're going to ask for everybody to um, give grace to themselves, to each other, and to our students. If you got a question, please ask, put it in the chat, unmute yourself, um, and just in general, ask questions. Try something new. It might go well or it might not, but failure is success and progress. That's a quote by Albert Einstein. Um, we're going to share with each other, support one another. We're going to offer a kind word or share a success story and be present. Um, that's the hardest one, I think, in this world that we're in now is to be present because there's so many things going on. But I want to thank both um, Leva and Lindsay that are here today. And then Kelly Mar Meyer, the reason she's um, hyperlinked is because we have her by recording that are gonna share. So we appreciate them being here. And I just ask for everybody to give them your full attention. Um, so does anybody have any comments or questions before we turn it over to Leva to share? All right, Leva, do you want me to bring up your PowerPoint or do you wanna bring it up? Well, you can you can bring it up if you're wanting to because I have crap all over my desk. You have crap all over. I Come know. On. We I have to do reports. We have a brand new dean, and she wants a report on all of the stuff we've been doing. So I've been trying to find the papers because who remembers what you've done the whole last you know semester? <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, it's the least I can do. And you're here. You created this. You're doing great. And Sharon. this is. Oh. Um, uh, when we were talking about dogs from the past, this is Apple, who passed away um, six years ago. But for some reason, she was the one that always, you know, was our, you know, she came at a time, I think, where my daughter needed her. And she's beautiful, just like all of our students are. Um, and I think they come to us when they, when they feel they need us. And um, I'm grateful that adult ed is always there for them. So you can go to the next one. So my journey, uh, which I wouldn't have taken without having the opportunity through the um, through Sarah and Tara and everybody to be learning this, because I was telling Sarah I did not even know that all of the Microsoft programs could be read, that students could hear them. I just thought it was Word. I don't know why. Um, so I'm an ESL teacher. I taught for about 20 years. TESOL was my area of interest in my doctoral program, but I've learned that there was and is a big gap in my teaching. I haven't taught GED for about 12, 15 years, so I don't feel confident in giving any advice of any sort <laughs> about that. Um, before, I feel like most of my professional development, other than, you know, all the conferences we go to in ICCB, was probably like you, it's from our students, right? But um, I need to take responsibility for staying up to date. And so I am very appreciative of this opportunity. Um, and my goal, that's not on the slides, but this summer, my goal is to get my go-to PowerPoints all checked for accessibility. Um, hopefully by the end of that task, I will be quicker at it. Right now it's slow going. So if uh, you guys are slow going, I give you my positiveness that we are gonna get better and faster at this because it's very important. So, okay. Anytime you have a question or something, this is very, look at us. There's not many of us just unmute and say something. So um, the two areas, I'm just going to concentrate on a couple of things. Um, for my thing, I rubrics. I've always used rubrics. 
but I wanted more student involvement and using the Designing for Equity and Access for All Learners lens for the first time in all my years of teaching, I gave pretty much total control of, of modifying and changed it totally uh, of an oral presentation rubric to my students. And it was the most awesome thing I've ever done. It really is. And then PowerPoints, using that alternative text option is slow going, but I, I have most of my ESL students use it. I don't currently have anybody who needs to use it due to any uh, differing abilities, but for ESL, they love to be able to hear everything um, as well as read it. So I don't know if any of you have have had that, but I have had. So next slide. So this is the rubric that we came up with. So what I did was, um, uh, I know, I probably many of you, uh, no matter what you teach, have them do uh, presentations. And um, I had them in groups and I teach on Zoom. And um, so what I did was I had a, a, this was like part of it, but it was so different. I sort of brought the other one. Uh, they, it was, had like 12 sections. And this is ones that we agreed on and changed the wording. So that was a big part of it. So they decided that what they needed, because we talked about focusing on a few things, um, state the topic and main points. They liked that. Um, organization, they wanted you to have some facts because they were going to pick a topic. Um, questions, like if they were able to answer the questions and give an explanation. And then for delivery, we all agreed, and again, this took a lot of time, um, that, that you have some eye contact, and they said, little looking at the notes. I was in heaven when they said that. Um, and um, uh, volume, and inflection. And inflection was a wonderful thing. They were describing it, uh, and then I introduced the word, and they loved that word for some reason. So I recommend you use it. They love the inflection word, and it's helped them. Uh, you know, when you have the people that read and never stop at a at a period, and they just go on and on and say introduction, state the topic, and main points, organization. For you know, it really has helped their reading. So the, the, the rubric that I had had, had four, um, you can have up to four points for each one, including needs improvement. They decided that needs improvement should just be needs improvement. You don't need improvement a lot or a little. I thought that makes so much sense, so much better than the rubric makers, you know? And that that just that they need a little improvement. They decided just three, and um, instead of four, and then they would total them up and total at the bottom, which was again very different. And they wanted to comment things on it. We start our um, because they had to spend time in their groups later um, uh, working on it. So we start our presentations next week because we had spring break too, um, and. Uh, the decision was that um, each of the other groups will do one rubric. So what they're going to do is after a presentation, um, they will go in their breakout rooms. I will meet with the people presenting and talk to them about how, how do you think it went. And the other groups would fill out this rubric. And that was very interesting to me. So I loved watching them teach. It, it, it just turned out to be a much bigger, better, better thing than I ever thought it would be. I'll have to see how it actually goes <laughs> next week. But, um, but the rubric was really helpful. And they all talked about being positive. Um, I was nervous because I had one student who was very rigid about things. But she just fell into place for the rest of them. It was a wonderful thing. And once again, I see how little I needed sometimes. And that is a good thing. So any questions or anything? Okay, next slide. Okay, so PowerPoints. This has been 
such a, a joy and horror to me because I know how wonderful all of my students, um, I have this semester, nobody who requires the accessibility due to any kind of disability or, and I teach advanced ESL, but they all, for the PowerPoints that I have done the accessibility for, use it and reported back that they find it so helpful as ESL students to be able to hear and see at the same time. And we all know that. Um, so um, next semester, my big goal is to have an accessible syllabus. And there's some, um, and Sarah probably and Tara and everybody probably knows more about this than me, but I know there's a lot of information on, on syllabi and um, in um, UDI. So I want to investigate that and see. And then we have at our college uh, office for, for students with disabilities to see if they have any input for me. Um, so um, because I think I sort of use the same kind of syllabus for maybe six, seven years. So I, I think this is definitely overdue. And so once again, thanks to the service center for, for kicking me in the butt and, and helping me realize that I need to, uh, if I'm not excited, they won't be. Um, so, and I like this picture um, uh, because that's sometimes how I, since I've been taking these, uh, this uh, program, I feel that I was really not bridging the gap that well. <laughs> it was like that. There was no bridge. There was no ability. And I'm not young enough and strong enough to jump over that, that gap. So um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to mining the wisdom, not only of this group, but of people here like our OSD office. And then the people that have been most helpful to me have been my students. And um, and I am really excited at the end of the semester, I I, def I always do something where they write a letter to the next students, but I have to think about this and maybe during the UDL thing, I'll think of a better way. I want to somehow infuse all that I'm learning into how I approach getting feedback from them. So feel free to give me any ideas, any questions. Okay, that's my address, which now I put in the chat too. But um, uh, again, I uh, like all of you, I'm sure I really appreciated this, this um, program where we could really dig a little deeper. And um, uh, I've seen some books on universal design and things, but as we all know, we have lots going on. So when we see a big old book, sometimes we just, you know, flip through it. So I know that uh, it is going to help for me to have it broke down into modules into the class so that I could digest and then have room for practice. So um, I hope all of you are enjoying it as much as I am. So thank you. Thank you, Lipa. We really appreciate it. If you oh, did, I show the, the I showed the rubric. Did I? Yeah. Did do you, you want me to bring? Yes, you brought on a slide. They saw, to they saw it. I couldn't come in. Yeah. See how tired I am. <laughs> Would you mind, Lipa, putting your um, email address in the chat again? There's I did. Oh, again. In later, okay. so that they can see it as well. Does anybody have any questions for Lipa about? It's in the chat. I'm the first one in the chat with the email. Yeah, but anybody who who joined after that was oh, posted. They won't they see, it? see it. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I, didn't it again. I didn't realize. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you, Leva. You're welcome. I'm wondering, Leva, like what what were the benefits that you saw from letting the students or encouraging the students to make their own rubric? I I for one thing I never done it before. I wasn't prepared for the level of discussion. And uh, so as far as an ESL teacher, we got the oral skills going, we got the written skills going. And then what I saw is the following week, everybody did their homework. I, 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 I think they're, and one of them even said, are we gonna have rubrics for homework? And I'm like, oh, leave it there, get on the stick. <laughs> so 
I think that you, we always try to have them participate, but I don't think, I know, I never took it to the level that to spend this much time on something. And I did, they asked me, are you going to use this for other classes? And I said, <clears throat> I said, do you give me permission? Oh my gosh, they were so thrilled. And they said, oh yeah, I do, I do, I do. <laughs> and it was so empowering. Um, I, you know, it was the idea I had because I needed to do a rubric and I thought, oh, I couldn't find a good one. I need, and I thought, why am I going to create it? Let's just have them. I am going to do this every class. I think I'll use this again, but maybe we'll see if they modify it at all. Um, because as we know, every class is always different. Um, but I, I I'm I love that you use the word empowering because I think that is um, a great word. We all like to have a bit of control over our, our world. Um, so yeah, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So Lindsay, um, are, do you ready? Are, do you ready? Are you ready to um, share what some of what you've been doing to? Um, I do ready, yes. You do ready, all right. <laughs> you guys, I'm I gotta go. tell you, I, I'm sorry, Lindsay, I'm interrupting, I'm sorry, but um, we ask in the Equity Institute, we ask for everybody for an aha moment, but Lindsay told us yesterday she had a duh moment. So I loved that um, reference, uh, but anyway, Yes, I'll I'll stop yes. talking and let you. Um, are you talking? Are you? Do you have anything you want to share visually? Or are you talking? I do. I do have it up and ready to share. I'm going to talk first, and then I'll share it. Um, my dumb moment. I'm I'm going to tell you about my dumb moment from yesterday. So, um, a little bit about myself. I'm Lindsay Larson. Um, I am a GED instructor and a new advisor at Spoon River College in Canton, Illinois. We are in West Central Illinois, very rural area. Um, our student population uh, consists of a lot of people in poverty. Um, so we are, uh, that's kind of where we're coming from. My background before entering adult education is special education. I was a special education teacher and a reading specialist running RTI program. Um, for the better part of 20 years before, well, actually about 10 years before I had my kids. And then I became a, a mom of triplets, um, one of whom has special needs and another one who is neurodivergent. So universal design has literally been a specialty of mine. It, I went in intending to do that as a, as a job. And now it's also something that I do as a mom. So um, UDL is, is something that is a huge part of my life not just in teaching, but, you know, in parenting as well. Um, it's Chad, my director is here right now. And we were having this discussion yesterday, actually, after our institute, our cohort meeting. Um, he's like, how, how do you make it look so easy? Or how are you able to do this? And I'm like, honestly, Chad, it's just, it's just second nature to me at this point, because I've had so much practice in it. And I'm really excited to get some new ideas and to bring UDL into my adult ed classroom. Because a lot of the things that I was doing as a special education teacher, I never thought to say, oh, duh, I can do that in my, in my adult ed class. So that's what I'm here to talk to you about today. The lesson plan that I presented um, in the cohort yesterday um, was about resume writing. Um, my classroom is a multi-level, um, all subject classroom. I have about 12 students, um, everything in there. We work really hard to, to individualize as much as we can. Um, job skills and job preparation and college preparation is, an, is another skill that we instruct also. Um, I have promised all of my students by the end of the semester that they will walk out of the classroom with a resume in hand that they can use um, to apply for jobs, uh, and having that relevance that it, it is important, you know, in student engagement. Our first module that we're talking about in the cohort right now, the UDL cohort, is multiple means of engagement. How to how to engage them with the why, engaging them in in and getting them to care about what they're doing. Um, that's you know why. Why Leela talked about, you know, having the students actually write the rubric is so powerful. Well, one part of it that I am not that great at is getting my students to be self regulate is to self regulate while they're working. Um, the students in my class, if I had to 
to categorize them, I would say that, I, you know, these are students who are probably in behavior programs um, when they were in school. So maybe some expulsions, some suspensions based on a different uh, behavior issues, but their behavior issues do pop up in class too. They get frustrated and they don't know how to self-regulate and to come back down and to maybe sometimes do what they need to do, right? Um, I think this is a societal problem that we've got going on right now. People don't know what to do when, when things get out of, out of whack. So my goal as a teacher was to pay more attention to the self-regulation aspect of the task. So with resume writing, my students are going to, and I haven't taught my lesson yet. My lesson is gonna start next week on Tuesday. Um, with the resume writing, it's going to be a multi-day lesson. And they're going to be using um, a template in Google Docs, which is probably going to be frustrating for them. Anytime we add a technology piece, you know, people in our area aren't really fluent in technology. And I anticipate frustration with this. Now, for me as a teacher, it's been a little bit since I've done some behavioral teaching um, of, of those types of skills explicitly, but that is that is where I'm going with this. So I'm scaffolding this right now for myself in addition to for my students. Um, so the first thing that I really want to do for that self-regulation is just to have them identify their level of frustration with the task. So each day I want them to be evaluating, well, how was this? Was this frustrating for me? Was this okay? Or, or yeah, this is totally fine. And so what I did is I created um, just a fun little, just a fun little I split it into four so that I don't, I'm not using a full sheet, but this is um, this is the frustration scale that I'm going to have them use. How would you describe your level of frustration after completing the activity? Um, totally calm, I could do this all day. Nervous, anxious, but I could get through it or I'm about to lose my mind, please make it stop. Um, I'm going to have them complete this after every day of the lesson. And my hope is that they will see that as they're engaging in this and as they're trying something new and practicing something new, I'm hoping that they'll be able to identify that their frustration is decreasing as they are moving through that task. Um, the next step there for me, for me as an instructor would be to, um, come up with some coping mechanisms that we can practice and model and maybe refer to at, you know, after they notice, hey, I'm here, well, what are some coping mechanisms you can use to get through this? And, you know, the thing is that our students are, are struggling with, um, with a lot of things. A lot of them are, come to us from experiences of trauma and a lot of the responses that we see are trauma responses. And, it's not always okay to have that type of trauma response if they're in a job, if they're, you know, going to college classes, um, if they're enlisting in the army, uh, if they're in the grocery store, you know, there are a lot of situations in which um, those trauma res responses are not going to be met with empathy. So self-regulation is, is a big goal of mine. And this is, this really has given me a, a good place to start because if they're not able to regulate themselves while they're doing something that is frustrating, then they cannot access the information. They are not going to get anything out of what you're trying to teach. So that's how self-regulation plays into accessibility. Without the ability to regulate your emotions, if something gets hard, then it, it's not gonna allow you access to the material. So that's about it. That's all I have. Does anybody have any questions or comments for um, Lindsay? Thank you, Lindsay. Appreciate you sharing. I have a question. Yeah. So I'm I'm interested. Um, so have you done this at all yet? even without the, the little cards in class or? No, this is a totally new lesson for me. I have not, I, I, I've helped them, I've helped students in the past organize info to do a resume with the intent to do it, but this is the first time we're, we're gonna be doing this. Oh, cool. I'm just interested to see if maybe they're, maybe they'll be able to track like if certain types of activities are triggering that frustration over others and then be able to like 
recognize that in themselves and then, you know, per UDL, like figure out a different way that they could do it. So really becoming, again, an expert learner because they're figuring out what is triggering them and how they could do it a different way. So I think that's really cool. And I'd love to hear a follow-up once, once you implement it. Thank you. Thanks. I love that. And, you know, that's why I made the form um, kind of generic because I can use it in a lot of different activities. And that would be a really great idea to track, you know, what kinds of things are frustrating you. Thank you. Hi, this is Marcia. Um, I really love your idea of regulation in, uh, in connection to a, not necessarily like um, academic content, if you will, uh, because I think about regulation a lot, but I don't always think about how important it is for students to regulate emotionally as well. And that I think that's such a big part of learning because if they are regulating their frustration, they know when to step away or do something different, you know? And so I was, I was really excited listening to you uh, talk about frustration rubric, rubric and just the idea overall, I would never have thought about something like that. That's awesome. Thanks, Marcia. Hey, and I'm just going to put a, a shout out. Last month in February, our Equity VLC, Marcia came and shared about celebrating and elevating and celebrating student voices in your classroom. So if you were not here, some of you said you were newbies, that recording is on the Excellence in Adult Education website that I bet if um, if I give Erin a minute, she'll put that uh, link in the chat. And if you want to go and access that after this session's over today. Um, so we do thank her for sharing, and we thank Lindsay and Leva for sharing as well. That's some great ideas. Um, you know, when Lindsay shared this yesterday about the frustration and, and just kind of calling it out and talking about it, I thought how, you know, I mean, we all have some time that we get frustrated, right? And we have developed, hopefully we've developed coping skills, um, some days better than others. Um, but uh, yeah, so I think that's that's awesome teaching people in addition to their academic skills, it's teaching them, um, you know, how, how to learn as Taryn, as Aaron mentioned, how to learn. But one of the ways we learn is that we are able to monitor ourselves and control ourselves and regulate ourselves. All right. So our third uh, person that's sharing today, her name is Kelly Meyer, and she has provided a um, recording for us. And so let me hit the right button this time. And I'm going to bring Kelly up, and um, I believe she shares her email in the recording if you want to reach out to Kelly about some of the things that she's doing. Button. All right. Uh, good afternoon, my friends, uh, and welcome to uh, the Equity VLC. I am Miss Kelly. I am with Lewis and Clark Community College here in Godfrey, Illinois. I am obviously not there with you today. I would love to be there with everyone um, to celebrate National Black Forest Cake Day. Whatever you all have going on in the Equity VLC today, I'm sure it is not nearly as exciting as national black forest cake day uh so i hope that you are able to enjoy some sweets today but i also noticed like as i was going through what our national day options were for today that it's also uh national triglycerides day um which in this uh instance we're going to choose not to celebrate that because you know that's a conversation for you all to have with your doctor however uh national day celebrations are a very easy way to create a ritual with your students to be able to help uh build rapport and do some community building in the classroom uh we talk about the national day every single day in class and if we don't hit on it first thing our students have come to the point where they 
ask us about it. And they want to know what today's national day is. And sometimes we stick with something lighthearted and fun and silly, like National Black Forest Cake Day. Uh, but sometimes we go with a more serious topic or something that falls in line uh, with whatever we are talking about that day. For example, uh, National Triglycerides Day is a really good launching point. For example, a good point of entry uh, into a larger science discussion. For example, I talk about science all the time in class. Uh, that is kind of where a lot of focus is. Um, and these national days can be a really good way to just have fun with students, but also segue into harder material. A lot of the national days that come up You'd be surprised how often they intersect with some of the things that we want, need, and, and uh, require, you know, conversations with our students about. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get the rest of this show on the road. So one thing I want to demonstrate for all of my friends, and we are going to pretend and I am giving you these instructions here in the moment. This slide right here is a really good and easy way uh, to ensure that you have a captive audience with uh, as little effort on your part as possible. Um, sometimes, I, usually toward the beginning of a lesson, I like to throw in just a simple, you know, Bitmoji uh, is what I have going on right here. I'm writing on a bumblebee because that's who doesn't want to start your day riding with a bumblebee, right? Uh, but this instruction box, my students have gotten and our students have gotten to be very accustomed to seeing this. So much so um, that I get the R in the chat box a lot of times before I even have an opportunity to ask. It's become part of our daily ritual as we not only get classes uh, started off for the day, um, but also as we return from uh, restroom breaks and things like that. It's a really quick, easy, literally two keystroke way for our online students to be able to let us know that they're there and present. I know sometimes getting some feedback from our online learners can be a little bit tricky sometimes, but uh, these abbreviated responses, a simple letter and hitting the enter key in the chat box can open up a lot of equitable doors for maybe students who don't have a lot of technology skills but are working on them. Um, maybe they're on a, uh, a mobile device that typing gets to be really tricky. Um, so these abbreviated responses, one, two letters, a number, you know, a very short response is a great way to get some interaction from students that you may not normally. It's a very safe point of entry uh, to be able to kick your class off. So if you're able to see these slides here, my voice, and you are ready to begin, hit that R in the chat box. We are pretending that I am having you hit that R if you haven't already. Maybe you already followed instructions because y'all are teachers and, and have a vibe for that. One way you can adapt this for your in-person students um, is we started off a few months ago by giving just a sign language letter R. Great way for our kinesthetic learners to be able to let us know that we have their attention without putting them too much on the spot. Um, and we've also just over the last couple of weeks, because I have spent a little bit of time on the Internet, uh, discovered that the sign language for ready is actually if you take the letter R in each one of your hands and kind of switch it almost like old timey saloon doors, you can tell your class or you can ask your class if they are ready with a, a, a low threat, um, but quick return on investment uh, way to see what your engagement is. So I am obviously not there with you today. Uh, that is because of the fact that I have big plans. Um, I am not at work today. Uh, I just so happened uh, that a good family member, and oh gosh, you gotta love family sometimes, right? Sometimes they drive you nuts, but sometimes they give you they gave you the best gifts. Uh, I am at Cardinals opening day. Hopefully the weather is supposed to be good and I'm recording this a couple of days ahead of time. So knock on wood, uh, everything is off uh, well. And I am looking at Clydesdales right now um, and not sitting in a classroom. <laughs> that was uh, something that Mr. Jeff uh, and our team was very willing to work with me on, on getting a day off. Um, I uh, give an appearance of being a sports fan. I literally had to borrow this hat from my sister-in-law uh, and had cat fur all over it. And, you know, I had to borrow all of this swag, but we can ditch the swag for now because it's an extra layer. doesn't really make me super comfortable. I'm not really a hat person, but I am going to be on opening day. 
Um, and if on uh, Cardinals opening day, you happen to be rooting for the Toronto Blue Jays, it's totally fine, my friends. Uh, as we like to let our students know all the time, mistakes are proof that you are trying. And, uh, you know, you can make better choices and just be a Cardinals fan. Uh, I talk a big game, but y'all, I'm just going to be up in the stands eating the free snacks that we're getting. So it's going to be a good time. Um, speaking of this particular graphic right here, uh, this graphic is actually something that is on my wish list, uh, my personal wish list that's just kind of living in my head. Uh, because one equity topic that I want to hit on that's a real easy implement um, for my uh for all of my friends no matter what level of teaching that you're at whether you are walking in the door for the first time or if you've been teaching for 20 years uh having a, some smash and fashion can be a really good way to communicate messages to your students um not only are you wearing a billboard for positive messaging throughout the course of your class um you are also opening up some pretty good doors to be able to have conversations with your students about topics that can sometimes be difficult to talk about. Uh, my students have gotten to the point so much now where they expect me to wear a different t-shirt every day. And uh, some of them, sorry, I'm like literally muting a, an alarm that is about to go off. Uh, and I don't want that to interrupt this recording. Um, so mental health t-shirts, they are easy. Um, and you can either have a conversation around them if you feel comfortable and confident in having those conversations with your students, or if you don't, you can literally let the t-shirt do all of the speaking for you. Um, the internet is a magical place with lots of different options out there. Um, Christmas, birthdays, like I bought a couple of shirts that I own, um, but luckily my birthday and Christmas are like real close together. And I think for the first time in uh, my years of life, um, I actually kind of appreciated it because I got a really nice influx of fashion over uh, Christmas break. A uh, couple of extra bonuses to this uh, that I've discovered uh, for my own personal well-being. It almost kind of gives me a reason to wear my heart on my sleeve and talk about hard things with my students. And a lot of times it opens up doors to have even more difficult conversations in a way that is productive and healthy um, and that our students have come to look forward to in a way that's also very emotionally safe. Also, I'm really comfortable at work every day. Um, I'm kind of over wearing dress clothes anymore. I'm a very sensory person. Um, and I've got a pretty sweet excuse not to wear dress clothes ever again in my life. Uh, um, and for, it's a lot for a lot more reason than just comfort. Um, I put the name of one of my favorite websites, selfcaresforeveryone.org. I could brag about them all day. Um, they are a fabulous resource. Fabulous. Um, I put a few examples of some of my favorite shirts that I've acquired over the last few months uh, that I wear to class. And a lot of times I'll pick out my smash and fashion for the day based on whatever's kind of going on in our spaces. Um, so I have a couple of shirts that are uh, focused a little bit more around uh, student anxieties, because uh, some of our students have anxieties around being in the classroom, um, and a lot of our students are facing like testing anxieties and things like that. Um, so simple shirts that can uh, pack a punch for a lot of different topics are awesome. I really like this one up in the top left corner uh, that I wear on a test, uh, close to test day when I know someone is getting like on the verge of taking one of their GED tests. Um, grow through what you go through is a really good one. If I know uh, in, any particular students um, are going through a hard time and it's a good way to let my students know that they are seen without uh, putting them on the spot and having them have uncomfortable conversations, um, just letting them know uh, that they are valued and they are heard through us. I wore this one um, at IASA for our presentation, Harmonizing uh, Learning, a Jazzed Up Journey Through Maslow and Bloom. Uh, it costs zero dollars to be a kind human being. It's just a good reminder that the things that we do to help promote equity and promote the good things for our students, they don't have to cost a lot of money. Y'all, Y'all, we are teachers and we don't have a lot of money. So finding ways that we can communicate those things with our with our important people among our staff, chef's kiss. 
Some other shirts that I have across the bottom, mental health is health. The future is inclusive. I really like this one, um, especially for helping my LGBTQ plus students feel safe in our spaces. Um, this 988 one is the very first one that I bought. Um, and literally it spurred a 10 minute conversation um, about the existence of the 988 number as a resource. Um, and especially a lot of my parents that I have in the room who have concerns for their young ones who, you know, we live in post post-COVID times and everybody's mental health is not what it was three years ago, right? And so making sure that my students know like out loud, outside of other signage and other communication that we have in our spaces, I'm a three-hour billboard for mental health. And this bowed one in the corner, go sports, move the thing to the other thing. I don't wear that one to work. That's what I would probably be wearing to the Cardinals game uh, if I had the opportunity to do so. Um, I hope that these uh, tips and tricks have been helpful for you. I have more that I'd like to share out, but I have class starting in literally 10 minutes. I think I've taken enough of your time. So um i am going to end the slide on this one here i've got my contact information on the screen um this uh so this whole slide deck just a, a little piece of info um if you're looking for uh snappy looking powerpoints and you're sick and tired of what microsoft has to offer in their uh in their regular templates i really like this website slidesgo.com write that down somewhere um i have been able to find a lot of different options for PowerPoints based on whatever the topic is for the day. Um, this one here is very simple, but I've been able to find really good, very free templates for uh, things like um, uh, science topics. They have lots of really good ones on the science end, you know, anatomy, physiology ones, ones that uh, look like atoms zooming around on a chalkboard. You can think of a topic or something close to it. And that website, y'all, has got a lot of really good free options to beef up your uh, PowerPoint game to communicate messaging to your students. Thank you so much. Go Cardinals. I don't even know where my hat went. There it is. Have a good rest of your day, friends. Go Cardinals. Woo! I just want to say go Cubs. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. I uh, I know whenever um, I watched the preview that I was like, oh, there's going to be some people who are going to be upset about that. So feel free to, you know, rep your team as well. Um, but if you don't know Kelly, she has tons of energy. Um, she uh, has lots of good ideas. And I love that our ideas from our three presenters today were like completely different. So I think at this point, what I would encourage everybody is, to, to do one new thing, to try and infuse one new way to include your students, to infuse um, universal design for learning. Um, so I think those are all just wonderful ideas. Um, does anybody have any questions or comments or does anybody, we have a few minutes, does anybody want to share something that they're doing at their program to um, make sure that they are including their students and providing accessible options in their classrooms. Oftentimes it's little things, y'all. So don't think that you need to like stop doing what you're doing. It's like, okay, what else could I do? Or sometimes it's calling out something with, with your students um, saying, hey, I'm putting you together um, in teams because I want to give you the opportunity to, you know, hear from other people. And um, so just a, that's just an idea. Um, Anybody have want to unmute and share something that they're doing? Okay, go ahead, Shannon. Oh, we're not hearing you. Maybe try to hear me now. Yep, there we go. Okay. Trying to choose the right speaker, right? That's yeah. <laughs> yes, I just wanted to say um, um, that with the first presentation, Miss Loftus, that um, I can kind of confirm what you're talking about. I I used to teach college English, and um, when the students have buy into that rubric and have that authentic connection to it. Um, 
it really can be a game changer because it's like you've uncoded, you know, something for them that they understand how grading happens now. And uh, I used to do what you do, um, but also have them then start grading some of their works as a part of that, you know, as a, a reflection assignment or regulation assignment um, as they would come in with at different points throughout their paper writing process. And uh, that was where I saw the most growth. So I, as a former English teacher, I really appreciate what you presented and, and can lend some backup to the authenticity of what you're saying. Thank you so much for the presentation. Thank you. And just, I, maybe I wasn't clear, that rubric is a group rubric that they will be grading the other groups. You know, so it won't be me. And fortunately in adult ed, I don't give letter grades or anything. So I don't have to do that. So. Okay, in the chat, it says, I'm excited to try having students create rubrics. I've never tried that before. So thank you very much. Um, Leva also, are you willing to share the rubric that their students created just as a starting point? Oh, um, actually, can I email it to you? Because I did this at home, you know, because of my day sure. job, I'm here at work and I don't do my night job, which is part-time teaching, because, you know, it's sort of cheating a little bit. So, but um, I will, I will send it to myself and send it to you tomorrow. Okay. I'm sorry, I don't have, because it was at home, because I teach on Zoom at home, you know. And, yeah. Um, also, um, if anybody's interested, when she was talking about mental health, I had found online, because I always have health units, a wonderful article called, What is a Mental Health Day? When I was doing um, the work unit, and then I found a time to take a mental health day conversation cards. It brought up so much wonderful discussion about mental health. So if anybody's interested, you have my, my email, I will send you that stuff. So. All right, thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and bring up the my screen again and tell a couple of announcements and you are gonna get a chance again to talk because we've got a few minutes left, but we do want you to know that the next equity virtual learning community will be April 27th. And if you registered for today, which you did because you're here, then um, you are registered for the entire series. Um, I will also mention that there is one hour of professional development for each of these virtual learning communities. Um, this time, if you'll be a little bit patient, Tara Schwab, which I think many of you know from our SIPDC team, is on a family vacation. And so this, um, all of you, uh, registration live on her Zoom. And so we need to wait till she comes back to get those certificates out, but they'll come later next week. Okay. And then, Aaron, do you, I'm putting you on the spot. I'm sorry I didn't ask you if this was okay. Do you want to tell everybody a little bit about the CTAE UDL SIG? Absolutely. All right. So, CT. Want, hey, Karen, do you want me to stop sharing and do you want to bring up the site? Yeah. Yeah, that'd be good. I have it up already and I'm going to share the link in the chat in case anybody prefers to view it on their own screen or share it. Um, so the UDL CTAE SIG, it's a lot of acronyms there, but um, CAST has an IRN, which is the Implementation and Research Network, which is focused on helping people engage further with universal design for learning. And there are a series of different special interest groups, like higher education, implementation, assessment, anti-racism, us, and then even one um, for those who speak Spanish. And so our CTAE interest group is focused on career, technical, and adult education. You'll probably see some names up here that you recognize um, of the folks who are currently running it in its one-year um, trial run. <laughs> and so our mission is really to bring folks together who are interested in universal design for learning and want to engage further. And this is open to folks from around the world. Um, so our next meeting will be coming up on May 31st, 
Um, and I, if I'm recalling correctly, I believe it's an 1130 to 1230 meeting time because we do have people who join us from other continents. And in fact, um, if you click right here for join us, you'll get an email when things are about to happen with links and all of that so that you are able to get a friendly reminder ahead of time. Because if you're like me, you are going to flag an email and then it's going to get buried and you'll forget about it come May 31st when the weather is lovely, even lovelier than today. Um, so if you click on join us, you'll be able to complete just a quick Google form. And currently we have folks from, I think, three different continents who join us to have discussions about what universal design for learning looks like in career technical and adult education. And that career technical part is integrated because we are all funded through the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, WIOA, and because we work so closely together, it seemed like a good opportunity to be able to connect and build those partnerships um, with our Title I friends. If you scroll down, you'll also be able to view our last meeting, which I highly recommend. It was a great discussion about low-tech options for using UDL in classrooms and labs. And I'm, I'm sure if you've been working in adult education long enough, you have worked in some location where you do not have reliable internet. Maybe you don't even have a lectern or a computer um, and you are doing it the old fashioned way with papers. And so often a lot of UDL, we talk about all the cool things you can do with technology and having documents be read to you. But what do you do in those instances where you don't have that technology available? So if that's of interest to you, you can watch it. You can view our slide deck and you can view our meeting notes. Everything's always posted there after the fact. So I highly encourage you to join so that you don't miss out on those extra conversations. There's no pressure to attend. <laughs> it's not like you're signing up. Um, and it's 100% free. So you show up to those meetings. They happen three times a year when you can. Um, and we are, we're growing. So I highly, highly recommend joining. Thank you, Erin. And how this evolved basically is um, uh, several of us UDL nerds got together. And then Erin said, you know, there's no special interest group for, for people in adult education. And so it was like, okay, let's, let's start one. And it's, it's been a great experience. Um, as Aaron told you last time, we talked about low tech options and you may have seen on the screen there next time in May, we're talking about um, using UDL and options for accessibility with individuals with disabilities. Um, but I think it's, and some of our speakers today already alluded to this, whether you have somebody who needs it because of a disability or there's many other reasons that accessible options really help everyone. Um, whenever we were first started, several of us, before we started the whole um, session today, we were talking about uh, speech to text and how it really helps if you have tired hands or you have an injury or maybe you don't have something. So, I mean, there's just so many great options for us today. All right. So thank you for sharing, Aaron. And as Aaron said, it's free to join. There's no pressure if you can't attend a meeting, um, but we just really encourage you to join us. A couple of final um, announcements. We also have our equity pathway training. We have our equity institute going on right now. We'll start again this summer and this fall with foundations of designing for equity and access for all learners. We encourage you all to join us in one of those trainings. Um, and then you can talk, come in, well, you don't have to go through that to come and talk at the equity VLC. You can speak at any time that you want. Um, so I would ask you in the few minutes that we have left, if there is a topic that you would like to see discussed in an upcoming um, learning community, either unmute and tell us that or put something in the chat. The other questions we have for you is like, do you have any ways that we can support the growth of equity discussions and learning at your programs? I will tell you that there's a program currently, a CBO um, in Chicago right now that ask us to come and help support them in their uh, staff development. And really and truly the 
um, teacher took the major lead, but we helped her with that. So there's all kinds of ways that we can support you. So I will be quiet for just a minute in case anybody wants to um, express something that they would like to see or some way that they could be supported or something that um, ideas that you have. I have a question, and this is me coming from the standpoint of a new, new in advising. So um, accessibility to the content that we're teaching in the classroom is amazing. I love that, that more people are taking that step, but how can we also help our students get better access to accommodations they might need on the actual GED test? I'm just talking about GED testing right now, or maybe, um, some of the other testing that's going on. Um, I just would like to hear from more people about that. Are, are people asking for, uh, I, are, are people asking students for past IEPs to see what kind of testing accommodations were helpful to them in the past? Um, how are they getting access to testing if the, the IEP is uh, more than five years old? Those are the kinds of things um, that, I'm, that I'm interested in, so yeah. That's a great topic. Um, we only have a couple of minutes today. Does anybody have a quick something that they want to share or else we can put that on the agenda for next time? We find that they, they're requiring another psychological or an eval and that costs $700. Uh, it's, um, that would be a wonderful thing if somehow through ICCB funding, um, they could do that to get accommodations for everything from GED to placement tests, um, but that's been our experience. Maybe I hope it's better for somebody else. But And that's what we're running into too. I'm qualified to do the academic portion of the testing, but I can't do the psychological mm -hmm. portion. So that's, you know, and, and our, our students can't pay for that. You know, it's, it's uh, really, really expensive. So, ooh, tricky. Well, thank you for bringing that topic up, Lindsay. This won't be the last time that we talk about it. I do want to make one quick point um, for you, and, and, and probably everybody knows this, but I feel like it needs to be said. Um, you can provide accommodations in your classroom uh, without any type of um, documentation. And Lindsay did clearly say it's for testing, but I want to make sure that you all know that there's no reason why you can't go ahead and accommodate students in your classrooms as you work towards um, a testing situation. The other thing I want to mention about testing is sometimes students come with one more than one uh, potential way that they could be eligible for accommodation. So if there is something that is a medical condition, because oftentimes that's easier to get a diagnosis for, and um, maybe that can get paid for. So I'm just saying, think about that also. Is that another option? Lastly, I want to mention, and there's absolutely no promises, but I was, I did actually hear this conversation where uh, Dr. Kathy Olson Tracy, our senior director, uh, what was talking with representatives from Title IV about options, potential options. And at that point, there were no promises made other than a promise to continue the conversation. And so I'm excited and hopeful. So let's all, you know, keep our fingers crossed about that as well, that maybe there would be something in the future. But we, I do want you to know that Kathy is advocating for us at the state level for that. So that's, that's awesome. Um, the last thing we're going to say before we leave today is if you're not on the PDN Pulse list, make sure you get on the list. Erin, um, could you put that in the chat as well? And that or else you can just scan the QR code. That just You'll get one email once a week um, on Tuesday telling you all the trainings that are coming up and um, all the different options for you and resources for you in adult education in Illinois. So with that, um, thank you everyone for joining us. You will be getting those PD certificates. Give us a little bit of time to get those out to you. And if you have additional topics that you didn't share today, please send those to us and we'll be glad to um, consider those for future uh, virtual learning communities. Thanks everybody.